Well, this is the coldest New Year's that this part of Missouri has seen in about 20 years. And uh, not only is that extreme, but you know, last winter was our first winter in a really long time uh, in, you know, the snow and cold, but it didn't even really get that cold here in Missouri, coming from Arizona. So this has been quite a shock for us in our system, but farm chores are a little bit different this time of year for us. Uh, so we are going to get bundled up and take you outside and show you just some of the things that we're doing to help uh, support the animals and to keep them safe and warm uh, during this time of the year. Now, right now it's about 10 degrees. It's the middle of the afternoon, uh, but overnight it's supposed to get below zero. Um, I think like 10 below zero with the wind chill and stuff. So we just need to make sure that everybody's safe and, uh, and sound for these cold days. So why don't you guys come along? We're going to get all bundled up and uh, go out, head outside and bring you with us. Well, one thing that's definitely different during this really cold weather is that we can't just use our hoses outside to uh, take water to the animals. So what I do twice a day is uh, fill up these five gallon buckets full of uh, not hot, but pretty warm water from the bathtub. And we carry them all the way down to the pasture and down to the barn to uh, give to the rabbits and to the goats. So that's what we're fixing to do right now. All right, let's go. So here's the chickens. Uh, normally we have them on an automatic water that runs from a 35 gallon uh, garbage can, uh, but you can see it's frozen solid. So this time of year, we need to give them water uh, manually a couple times a day. I gave them water this morning as well, and you can see that theirs is already frozen solid. So uh, you can see where I've broken it out the last few days. I'm gonna show you. In the winter, we use these rubber, rubber pans because they don't break. They're easy to get the ice out of. Flip them over. Step on it a few times, and the ice comes right out. I love those pans because you can, you know, you can really abuse them and they don't break, which is really nice. So now we'll just give them some nice warm water. They have plenty of food. Uh, we have that uh, big uh, automatic feeder for them that holds about 100 pounds of feed at a time, so we know they have plenty of food. Main thing this time of year is just making sure they have access to water. Let's head on out to the rabbits and the goats. phased by this weather at all. They're still playful and they're out and not hiding inside the little barn area. Um, their eating habits are really the same. Uh, we just need to come out here and make sure that they have some uh, liquid water. Um, I looked at their water pail already and it looks pretty frozen so I'm just gonna dump out the ice and give them some some warm water. I guess this one couldn't wait. I guess they're thirsty. Do you need some water, princess? Okay, honey. My turn. <laughs> Come on, you shorty. from yesterday I guess. Here, you can drink out of this one better because yeah. Next stop is in by the rabbits. Now we've got uh, 10 breed breeding does um, up in hanging cages and two breeder bucks. So we keep them here uh, inside our barn area, uh, you know, at least three sides of their living area is 
you know, sheltered from the wind and stuff. And uh, so they stay pretty, pretty warm and, and snug in there. Now on these really, really cold nights, what we've been doing is adding a layer of hay in one nice corner of their cage so that they can get on top of there and stay warm. Also, what just doesn't work for us in the winter are our standard water bottles for the rabbits. So we have replaced those for the winter with uh, smaller rubber bowls uh, that if they get frozen, we can, like like in the chicken coop, we can stamp on them uh, without breaking them, get the, getting the ice out of there, and then we can uh, dip the bowls in the warm water and replace it in there. Uh, we're doing that about once or twice a day, depending on uh, how cold it is. So you can see even the bowls, you know, the water is getting pretty frozen. Uh, but the nice thing about these uh, is that we can just stamp on them on the ground and the ice just pops out without breaking the rubber. Perfect. Now I can just dip it in the water and put it back in the cage with the rabbit. I'm just going to put some hay in uh, uh, the rabbit's cages so that they can get up on top of it uh, and keep warm. And uh, you know, this disappears basically every day because they also like to eat it. Uh, that's one reason actually why we don't put straw in their cages. Uh, straw really has zero nutritional value for them. Um, and if they're going to be eating something, I would much rather they be eating something that will, um, will be healthy for them. So I'm just going to put this nice little stack right in the corner of this cage so he can get up on here if he gets cold. There, see? Now he can eat it or he can get up on top of here and kind of get off the wire and get out of the cold. We'll do that for every rabbit. Alright, so now it's time to do the rabbit tractors. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is move all of them for the day. Uh, we move them uh, one spot each day. Uh, not that there's a lot of fresh grass right now, but it does give them fresh ground at least to be on every day. Uh, and after we move all the tractors, uh, then we'll fill their bowls inside the tractors. Now in the tractors, uh, we give them two bowls in each tractor. So that way uh, they have a little more to drink because there's more bigger rabbits in there. So, man, this is one of those deceiving days where <laughs> there's not a cloud in the sky and it's sunny out, but it is cold. It's cold. And they're saying tonight the wind's supposed to pick up and we could hit like 15 below zero, which for this part of Missouri is pretty dang cold. So yeah. we want to get back inside where the fire is nice and warm. So we're going to get going. So now that we have the tractors moved, we'll give them some fresh water. Remember earlier in the fall, before it got real cold, I added this divider in all of the tractors, uh, which will give them a little area to get more out of the elements during the winter. And so far, it seems to be working really well. Uh, like I said, this is about as cold as it ever gets here. So uh, if they're doing well in this weather, I think We've got it nailed and they'll be good in just about any weather we get here, so. But again, we put two bowls in each tractor. And these guys tend to spill theirs pretty easily, so. That's why we like to come out at least two or three times a day to do this. Just to make sure everybody's staying healthy over the winter. So that's it. On to the next one. Then we still have our billy goat and his mate to uh, take care of right now. And then it's back inside to the fire. Well, we're in with our billy goat. His name is Rocky. Um, and he has a special friend right now. Um, our uh, doe, Rory. 
Uh, so we're hoping for some beautiful spring babies out of these guys. Uh, so we're just gonna come in and give them some water and some hay and then uh, go back in the house. One last stop before we go back inside is to uh, check for eggs. Uh, this time of year when it's this cold, we try to check for eggs a couple times a day uh, because uh, we've actually had some of our eggs starting to freeze and crack uh, from freezing. So on our way back to the house, we'll swing by the uh, chicken coop and see how many eggs we have. it is um, we only have 14 chickens so uh, this is a pretty good pretty good haul for right now I'll come back out one more time today and check again You know, you guys, there's a lot of misconceptions, I think. People think, oh, once gardening season is over and things, you know, you're not raising your meat chickens for the year. Oh, there's nothing to do around the homestead. And that, you know, life just kind of gets put on hold all winter. But that's not true. Animals need to be fed and projects need to get done. And the list just keeps getting longer and longer. So uh, we're glad to be back inside, at least for a little while, till we have to go out and do this all over again. If you're new to our channel, uh, we sure hope that you'll hit that subscribe button before you leave. If uh, you've been a regular follower, thanks for sticking with us. Uh, we sure enjoy making these vid videos for you guys. Uh, don't forget to uh, check out our Etsy store and our Amazon shop to help support the homestead. Until next time, you guys, thanks for stopping by, and God bless.